Okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at Vieta's formula for quadratic and cubic equations. So let's just start with uh, quadratic equations. Uh, now first of all I'm just going to have a look at uh, the general form of a quadratic equation which is ax squared plus bx plus c equal to zero. And what we can do here is just divide across by a. So we've got x squared plus b over a x plus c over a is equal to zero. Now the let's say our the roots of this particular equation are x is equal to let's say p and x is equal to q. So that would mean then if these are the roots by the factor theorem then x minus p and x minus q would be factors. And if we multiply these two factors together, we should get uh, this here. So let's do that. Uh, we have x minus p multiplied by x minus q equal to zero. Let's just multiply this out. So we have x times x, x squared, minus qx minus px plus pq equal to zero. And we can just factorize out the x from the from these two here. So we have x squared minus q plus p times x plus pq equal to zero. Okay, so if we just have a look at our original uh, equation here, let's say this one here, let's just stick that underneath. So we have x squared plus b over a x plus c over a equal to zero. So let's equate the coefficients. So we have a one here and a one here, so that's fine. So we have we can say that these two here are equal, and we can say that these two here are equal. So in other words, what we can finally say then is that uh, minus q plus p is equal to b over a and we can also say that pq is equal to c over a. So down here we can say that q plus p is equal to minus b over a and here we've got pq is equal to c over a. So what we can do now is just simply say that if we add the two roots q plus p that will give us uh, minus the coefficient of the x. If we multiply the two roots, we'll get the term independent of x. So we can write that as uh, x squared minus the sum of the roots plus the product of the roots equal to zero. This would be our general formula for any quadratic. So let's just have a quick look at an example. Let's say for example we have roots let's say x is equal to 2 and x is equal to minus 3. So what we need to do here is just add the root. So let's say 2 plus minus 3 or just 2 minus 3 is equal to minus 1. This is the sum of the roots and we need to multiply 2 by minus 3. That's the product of the root so that's minus 6 so this is the product. So our quadratic equation then can be x squared minus the sum of the roots. So the sum of the roots is minus 1. So it's minus minus 1x plus the product of the roots. So that's minus 6 equal to 0. So that's just simply x squared plus x minus 6 equal to 0. Now this is only one possible equation. Of course we can multiply across by anything here. We could for example multiply across by 2 so that would give us 2x squared plus 2x minus 12 equal to 0. That would give us really the same roots. But this is our, this would be uh, an example of a quadratic equation with these two roots here. Okay so let's have a look at the cubic version now. So Let's again start with the general formula for a cubic equation. So that's going to be ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equal to zero. Now again we can divide across here by a. 
So we, we would end up with x cubed plus b over a x squared plus c over a x plus d over a equal to zero. Okay, so let's uh, just pick three general roots. Let's say our x, our roots are, let's say p, q, and or. If these are our roots, that means our factors are x minus p times x minus q times x minus or equal to zero. So if we just multiply these out, um, we will end up with the following. Okay, so what I've done here is I put the x cubed first, then I have the x squareds here, I have the x's here, and I have the term independent of x here. So what I can do next is just factorize out the x squareds and the x's. So I've got x cubed minus, here I've got or plus q plus p x squared. And then I can factorize out the x's here. So I've got q or plus p or plus p q, that's times x. And then I've got p q or out here at the end, and that's equal to zero. Okay, so let's have a look at what we've ended up with here. We have uh, our x cubed here, we've got our x squared here, we have an x here, and we have the term independent of x here. So remember what we started with, we started with x cubed plus b over ax squared plus c over ax, and then we have a d over a out here, and that was equal to zero. So again, we can, co uh, we can equate the uh, coefficients. So what we see then is that, again, we have a one here and a one here, so that's fine. So we can see that when we add up the three roots, we'll get the negative version of this here, because remember, we have a plus and a minus here. So in other words, uh, or plus q plus p is gonna be equal to minus the coefficient of the x squared, minus b over a. Also, we've got q or plus p or plus p q, that's going to be equal to c over a. And finally, if we multiply the three roots, p times q times or, that'll give us minus d over a, because we have two different signs here. So these are our three equations that we can use. So if we add up the three roots, we get the coefficient of the x squared uh, with the sign changed. If we multiply the three roots, so q times r, p times r, and p times q, add them together, that will give us the coefficient of the x. Multiply the three roots then, p times q times r, that'll give us the negative version of the, or the, the, this, the term independent of x with the sign changed. So these are our three equations. Okay, so let's just have a look at an example, how we can use these three. Okay, so I'm gonna take um, three roots. Let's say, so this is our example. Uh, let's take x is equal to minus 3, x is equal to 5 over 2, and x is equal to 2. Okay, so let's look at doing these things to our three roots. So the first thing we want to do is add up our three roots, so r plus q plus p. So we're going to do this one here. So we're going to take minus 3 plus 5 over 2 plus 2, so this is the sum of our roots. And when we add those together, we'll get uh, 3 over 2. And remember, this is going to give us our minus b over a, minus b over a. Okay, so next thing we're going to do then is just look at this one here. So we're going to multiply our, uh, multiply our roots and then add them in pairs. So we have, let's say, minus 3 multiplied by 5 over 2 plus minus three multiplied by two plus five over two multiplied by two. Let's see what we end up with there. So we're gonna end up with, um, let's see, minus three fives, 15 over two, minus six plus 10 over two, which is five. And then when we add those, we get minus eight and a half, or minus 17 over two, let's say, minus 17 over two. And remember, this is gonna be 
this is going to be our C over A. Okay, so let's look at the last one then. We're going to look at this one here where we just simply multiply the three roots and that will give us minus D over A. So let's multiply the three roots. So we're going to take minus 3, we're going to multiply that by 5 over 2, we're going to multiply that by 2. When we multiply those three together we get minus 15 and remember that's going to be minus D over A. Minus D over A. That will just mean that 15 is equal to D over A. Okay, so we have our three coefficients if you like. Uh, we have B, minus B over A, we have C over A, and we have D over A. So let's just work with those. Okay, so what we have here is 3 over 2 is equal to minus B over A. We have seven, minus 17 over 2 is equal to C over A. And we have 15 over 1 is equal to D over A. Okay, so you can see here that we have A's on the bottom. We have an A here, an A here, and an A here. So we have a 2 here, we have a 2 here, but we have a 1 here. So I'm going to change this fraction to 30 over 2, which is the same thing. So now I have a 2 on the bottom. So you can see here that A can be equal to 2. Now if A is equal to 2, we can work out B and C then, okay? So if we take, this is our first coefficient here, if you like. So let's, let's look at this one here. 3 over 2 is equal to minus B over A. So A is 2. So you end up here with, let's just cross multiply here. So you've got 2, 3, 6 is equal to minus 2B. So that will give us minus B. Or that will give us B here is equal to minus 3. So B is minus 3. Uh, let's look at working out D then. So again, here we've got this is our second one here. This is B. So over here we have 30 over 2 is equal to D over A. And remember A is 2. So let's cross multiply here. So you've got 60 is equal to 2D. And then that will give us 30 is equal to D. So now we have our D as well. So we've got A, B, D, so let's work out C. So we have minus 17 over 2 is equal to C over A. So again, A is 2, so that will give us minus 34 is equal to 2C. Finally, that will give us C then is equal to minus 17. So this is our C. So we have all our four coefficients now so we can write down a cubic equation that will work with these particular roots. So our cubic equation was ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d is equal to zero. So a in this particular case is 2 so we can say 2x cubed. b is minus 3 so it's minus 3x squared c is minus 17, so that's minus 17x, and d is 30, and that's equal to 0. So this is our final cubic equation that will work with these particular roots. So you can multiply across by any number here, and you'll get another equation. There are an infinite number of equations, really, but this is this is um, a nice neat one here that, that will work. The, the roots minus 3, 5 over 2 and 2 will satisfy this particular equation here. Okay, so that's it for this particular video on Vieta's formula.